Hulk. <sighs> Smash. <laughs> well, um, I just thought I would put that in there. Um, so I've been wanting to share. I've been wanting to share. I, I think the, the video, actually, every time I try to put some video in, uh, it's still not doing it right. But that's a scene out of the Avengers. OK, and uh, I just been wanting to uh, share that. I don't know why, because, well, I do know why, because of all the the evil in the world and all the wickedness, all the demons and, and uh, the enemy, Satan, you know, just so much wickedness and corruption uh, for so, so long, you know, and, and, uh, and so this, it, it's kind of wanted to bring a, a smile to your face, you know, even though it didn't play the video correctly, once again, uh, that's the only thing that that's not working on this, uh, on this platform. So I don't know why, but that is a scene from the Avengers, we know uh, our Avenger, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to come back to smash. Okay, and uh, just like uh, um, uh, that one uh, uh, por portrait picture that shows, you know, the statue, the, the 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 stone, the rock that is not cut out by human hands, but cut out by by our Lord. It it is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua, that is coming down to smash. Okay. And that's reality. I know these are uh, just movies, and uh, but that's a scene where uh, Captain America, okay, Captain America, especially what's going on in the United States, Captain America, he uh, actually tells Hulk, he says, "Smash," okay, and uh, and all the wickedness, all the wickedness, and there's actually a portal that's open in the heavens and um and actually there's this wicked demons demonic and so i thought that would be a way to open this uh, uh study uh maybe with a laugh and also just a reassurance of uh of our lord uh um his vengeance okay because the lord says the vengeance is his saith the lord amen so without further ado um i got a couple things i want to share before um, I go ahead and um, and uh, open up. Well, let's let's open up in prayer first of all, and then we'll get to the rest of, the, of what I've got to present to you, which is not a lot. Uh, today we're going to try to get through uh, six uh, chapter six and seven in the book of Amos, and so um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and pray in. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, once again for this morning. It is a blessed morning once again, Lord. Every day is another day closer to your kingdom come and for your will to be done here on this earth as it is in heaven. So thank you, Lord, for giving me this time to share your word of what you spoke to the prophets, Lord. And just honored, like I'm just honored to be able to resound and recite your word, Lord Father God, that you spoke your words lord father god uh it is uh, an honor to me to be able, to be even able to speak your words lord father god so in this uh hour or so uh may you uh use me may you use me as uh your vessel lord holy spirit and may you open up the eyes and ears of those who may be listening or watching as i present your word lord father god in spirit and in truth may you be glorified and magnified and we pray all these things in your mighty and precious name, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, in your name, Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. And all God's people say, amen and amen. Uh, you know, at the end of that prayer, you know, I I, I do, you know, I heard uh, Pastor Anderson, it's, it's another friend of mine, Pastor, which... You know, he says, say the name, you know, say the name of Jesus, because a lot of I know I understand that Jesus is God. You know, I understand that. But, 
you know, uh, with all this going on and these different uh, types of, of, of false gods and, and God worship, you know, the Lord has a name, you know, and his name is Yeshua. OK, and uh, and he's the only savior. He's our savior. Without him, uh, what do we have? It's all about what he done on the cross and it's all about believing in him. So he he is uh, uh, he is worthy to take the scroll, amen. So we must say his name, Yeshua. You know, don't get used to saying it. Don't just say, "Yeah, I believe in God." And just there's only one Savior. And if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, then then uh, we would still be uh, cut off, and uh, um, and uh, we would still be headed for destruction, amen. So it was him that made the way for us. He redeemed us. He's the perfect Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Amen. So, um, so yeah, make sure you get used to it. If you're not used to saying his name, well, get used to it, you know, and it's, it's odd, you know, some people cannot say his name, you know, and, uh, they say, yeah, God, I said, no, say Jesus. No, God. Yeah. Okay. No, say Jesus. And, and it's hard. It's hard for people sometimes to say his name, you know, Yeshua, you know, so anyhow, um, I don't want to ramble on. Okay. Uh, but maybe this is how sometimes I think, okay, wait a minute. I think 10 o'clock is going to be a safe time to start this Bible study every morning. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully by 10 o'clock, because as I get prepared uh, and everything, 10 o'clock would be the, the ideal time, right? Today, I, I actually wanted to begin at 10 o'clock and I did. Okay. I got everything prepared and ready to show you. And, um, and so I think 10 o'clock would be, would be, um, would be ideal. Um, I did want to mention a uh, brother in Christ. His name is Mukul. Mukul. Um, well, he presented me something that I'm already aware of, and I believe you are too. But it's uh, just a special. Let's 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 pray right now for India. Okay, those who are in India, our our brothers and sisters there in India, uh, and also Muslims, you know, that are that live in India. Any other religion besides uh, their Hindu religion, um, they are being persecuted heavily in India. And uh, this is uh, a pastor, a priest, a pastor, a priest. He uh, he had a word of knowledge, and he he just said, "Well, I already knew this was going on, and so many other nations too." But let's pray a, a, a special prayer for India. Okay, so dear Heavenly Father, I just want to pray for India, Lord. I want to pray for our brothers and sisters there who are being persecuted, Lord. Uh, this this nation of India is actually allies with us here in the, in the United States, Lord, Father God. So uh, this is the difference between other nations that surround Israel. There is a difference, Lord. Um, and so let's just pray that our government, government would realize, Lord, and, and to give them some kind of help there in India, Lord, our brothers and sisters. Uh, because they are being persecuted and oppressed very badly, Lord, and uh, and so I just pray for peace in 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 uh, in India, Lord Father God. Even though you told us, Lord, I know you told us, Lord, that we are going to be persecuted, Lord, and uh, it's happening, Lord, all over the world. It's happening, and especially in the Middle East and in India and these places. But although the, it's it's probably not going to stop, Lord. Um, I just want to pray that you give them the courage and, and to, the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, Lord, they are pressed. Meanwhile, we wait for your return, Lord. But you told us in your word that we're going to suffer. If we pick up our cross, we're going to suffer, Lord. And, and so just give them, give them peace in their persecution and oppression. And may many come to faith in you because of this persecution, Lord. And because uh, this is what's happening in Afghanistan and all these nations, Lord. Uh, you are drawing way so many more, so many Muslims. Uh, you are just you are just raising them up and and uh, and building your church, Lord. So I just want to thank you, Father God. But just I want to pray for for a special prayer for my brothers and sisters in India and all the God's people say in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen and amen. Okay. Amen and amen. So um, I, I wanted to bring you a picture really quick. Uh, remember I, I was trying to get up out of my chair to actually show you this, the height. Okay. Now this is, I believe it's Joe Richardson. Uh, I, I, when you see the actual picture and you, and you make it full screen, it kind of looks like his face, but I know this did come from, from living passages, uh, 
the tourist uh, company that, that that he's involved with. He goes on tours. He he does tours. Uh, uh, so you know, just an awesome time. I mean, it would be a it's one of my dreams of mine. I, I always dream. <laughs> so, uh, but that would be awesome. Anyhow, um, this is uh, him. I think believe it's him, but it's a picture from him. Uh, that somebody took just when it's blown up really big, it is just awesome. This is the split rock, uh, where Moses, uh, the Lord told Moses to touch it and actually he hit it. And, uh, anyhow, he just said, speak to the rock, but he actually hit it. Well, we won't go further into the details, but this is where the water flowed out for the Israelites in the wilderness. They're at the bottom of, of the real Mount Sinai, uh, Jabal Allah's. Uh, why do I say real Mount Sinai? Because this is the real Mount Sinai and real Mount Sinai in Arabia, uh, not on your traditional maps. I believe those maps should be changed in your uh, Bibles. Okay, if you looked at a Bible map uh, and look for Mount Sinai, they're, most of the time now, they're. I don't know if they changed it yet. Hopefully they did, but uh, they'll show you the other side of the peninsula. So uh, this is the real true Mount Sinai. I, I, I believe it with all my heart. Uh, check it out for yourself. So yeah, look how small a person is. I'm telling you, he looks like an ant. He looks small compared to this mountain, you know? And when you make this full size on your computer, you're like, wow, it is big. And I'm pretty sure it even looks bigger than that. Because even looking at it from there, saying, oh, that's no problem. That hike is no problem, especially all the way up here where Moses used to go. Moses actually walked further up the mountain. So I thought I'd share that picture with you because I was trying to give you a full view of that picture I used as my background. Uh, so I hope you uh, enjoyed that. And so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the scriptures. Uh, six and seven, I'm going to try to make it through both within this hour. And uh, I know I've been keeping it under an hour, so this is what I'm trying to do now is keep it under the under an hour, especially for doing live. You know, um, I, I just want to keep it under an hour, you know, uh, even though you could stop and rewatch this whenever you want. I'm so glad if you've been following along in this in this journey through the major and minor prophets. Uh, please check out my channel. Uh, well, I, I it actually does record to the channel, but if you're on Facebook or anything like that, go, you know, I left the link on Facebook to go to my channel. Uh, we actually, I actually pre-recorded. I didn't just start the book of Amos. I've been going through uh, Isaiah. If you don't know, maybe you're watching this for the first time. Uh, I started uh, through the major and minor prophets. That's actually the title of this journey. It's uh, a journey through the major and minor prophets. So I've been uh, doing one chapter, maybe two or three at a time. Uh, all the way from the book of Isaiah. So we finished off all the major, major uh, prophets, and now we're entering uh, the, the minors. So we're in the book of Amos now. So if you want to go to my channel, check it out. I'm not too sure how this works, but I know on, on Facebook, it has the link in the description. Um, so yeah, soldiers in Christ. Amen. So here we go. Um, the book of Amos, okay, chapter uh, six, okay. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Amen. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, actually, uh, we'll, we'll leave it there. I'm just going to say, um, you know, this, this, uh, this, this, this uh, scripture, uh, let me get the words, was actually brought to my attention yesterday by a beloved uh, person, a person I love very much in my life. Uh, brought it to my attention yesterday. It's one of her favorite scriptures, um, someone very dear to me. So I just want to, uh, I brought it up this morning, at, amen, you know, because I pray that uh, this person would just get closer to the Lord and, and just really seek his face. Um, and so, you know, it was good to hear that this was her favorite scripture, you know. And I'm like, yeah, right on, praise the Lord, you know. Uh, and, and uh, Ezekiel 25, uh, chapter uh, chapter 25, verse 17 says, I will execute terrible vengeance against them to punish them for what they have done. And when I have inflicted my revenge, they will know that I am the Lord. That went perfect with the video. Maybe I'll play that after again. 
uh, depending on how I'm feeling after. Maybe I'll end it with that same video. Hopefully it plays a little better. You know, I hopefully they could fix that because I've been having a lot of problems with replay. I don't know why, but um, I don't know. Uh, so hopefully it'll play better. But yeah, Hulk smash. OK, so smashing the wicked. The Lord will smash the wicked. And uh, his vengeance right here, I will execute terrible vengeance against them to punish them for what they have done. All the fallen ones, okay? Uh, this is the wicked, evil, demonic beings, okay, uh, that have corrupted mankind ever since way, way long ago. This is why all this is going on. So uh, he's going to destroy all the wicked, amen? So that is going to be a day that we could uh, that we could uh, give the lord all the glory that day we will be kept we will be safe in his arms in other words we will be be safe in his arms he will have us covered and taken care of us he will be he have us gathered already or if you want to say raptured already we're going to be in a safe place while he executes this judgment but like always we want to pray for those we want to pray for those to come to the lord before that great and terrible day as we were going through yesterday that that great and terrible day, the day of Jacob's trouble, Jacob's distress. Okay, so we must pray and spread the gospel, share the good news with others as much as we can. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and go to the book of Amos here. And we'll continue in chapter six. Amen. Okay, so chapter six, it says, What sorrow awaits you who lounge in luxury in Jerusalem? And every time it says Jerusalem, uh, I like, you know, uh, Bibles that say Zion, and because and, it does say Zion. Uh, in the Hebrew, it's Zion. So I just wanted to make that comment here. Um, but you, you, your Bible, some of your Bibles say Zion. I like Zion. Uh, but just remember, that's Jerusalem, amen? In the Hebrew, that's Jerusalem, that's Zion. In the Hebrew, Zion, okay? So it says, What sorrow awaits you who lounge in luxury in Jerusalem, and you who feel secure in Samaria? You are famous and popular in Israel, and people go to you for help. But go over to Calneh. And see what happened there. Calne, all these little little towns and little um, um, just little little um, cities, or there were ancient cities. Calne was actually uh, things were going on there, very bad things, wicked things. Uh, I believe it had to do with the Am Amorites. I believe. Don't mark my word on that. I just read it, but I kind of you know was going to present it to you. But just their little towns, okay, uh, in that region, okay. So it says, but go over to Calne. And see what happened there. Then go to the great city of Hamath. And down to the Philistine city of Gath. You are no better than they were. In other words, they were worshiping false gods. There were a lot of pagan worship, pagan idols. They were doing atrocities there. They, I mean, they were just pagan. They were just evil. Okay. So in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And so they, he says he compared them to these, to, to these towns and these cities where these things were going on, the immorality and all these things that the fallen ones, the, 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 the fallen one has corrupted, you know, and, and the, they're following these false gods. Okay. So, um, it says, go down there. It says, go, go, then go to the great city of Hamath and down to the Philistine city of Gath. You are no better than they were. So he's just telling them. He's just continuing to tell them, you know, you are no better than they were. And look how they were destroyed. Okay, so the Lord destroyed those towns. Uh, and we see it. And he's going to do it again. Amen. You push away every thought of coming disaster. Now, this is what I wanted to expound on. You know, you... 
a lot of times, you know, we, we, we want to look the other way. It's very hard, especially in the world today. There's so much evil. There's so many things going on, okay? And, and the wicked, it, it, it is growing. You can see it more and more. It's prevalent. And, and, and now entering the, the laws of the city, you know, the laws of the country, you know, right now they're trying to implement things, uh, take away certain freedoms and in the, in the, uh, in, uh, in the Middle East surrounding Jerusalem, they already took away their freedoms. Okay. Now, now in India, they're doing the same thing. You know, it's, it's, we see it, it's prevalent how the world and, 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 uh, and uh, things are changing so, so fast, so quickly. And, but we want to actually look away. Some of us want, don't, don't want to look at it. You know, um, you know, I start talking to people about the, these things that are coming and they, and they kind of like shy away from it. You know, you know, they don't want to hear doom and gloom, but, but we are entering these things and the Lord, we must prepare as believers, as Bereans, we must prepare our families. We must prepare ourselves spiritually because we're not going to be able to stop it. Yes, we could fight. We could fight for our rights peacefully. We could actually, yes, fight for justice. Yes, we can do this, but we can't stop what's already told to us by the Lord. We must pick up our cross and be ready for it and be ready for it. Okay, peacefully, yes, we can fight for our, our, our rights. Yes, we can, you know, fight for justice. The Lord wants justice. He wants justice. He wants you to have a heart like his justice, truth. Yes, speak the truth. Okay, but always understand the more we speak the truth, the more we're going to be hated. And that's prevalent that that right now that is happening right now. The more we speak the truth on these platforms, the more we get uh, uh, um, uh, suspended or our channel gets taken down or we get a strike against us. So we, the more we speak the truth, the more things happen. And this is happening today. And it, it's not fair. But the Lord, the Lord told us these things were going to happen, especially if you're a believer speaking the truth of the Lord for speaking truth of God. You know, this is what's going on right here. These prophets were going to them and they were speaking the truth. The disciples, Paul was speaking the truth to, to the Greeks. You know, he was going to the, and he suffered a lot. He suffered a lot. The minute he changed that the Lord uh, uh, blessed them with a new birth and he, and he knew that who the Messiah was. And he was very learned in his ways. Very, very learned. What do I mean? He, you know, he was the top of his class. I believe that's why the Lord chose Paul because he was so uh, good. He, his, he was a student. Okay, after Gamaliel. Okay, uh, so he he was the top of the top of his class in the scriptures, in the Torah, in the law. So when he he knew, but he missed it. He missed it. Uh, uh, Pastor uh, Jake McCandles has a has a good uh, he did a, on at the advent. OK, he says many missed it, missed what missed the prophecy of our Lord and uh, spoken of in Isaiah. They missed it. And what do I mean by missed it? Well, Paul missed it. Even a student, the way he was, he missed it because what was he doing? He was persecuting the believers in Christ after they, they uh, crucified the Lord. He was persecuting those of the way. He was persecuting, and he came back and he told them, why are you persecuting me, Paul? Okay, he was Saul. Okay, Saul, Shaul, Shaul, why are you persecuting me? You know, and, and, and right away, Paul knew who he was. Who are you, Lord? Messiah. Yes, he knew something happened there and he recognized him. And right away, because of his study, because he knew what the prophet said. Remember, he was top number one in his class. So he knew the Messiah. He knew that was him. And he's like, whoa, it blew him away and radically changed him, radically changed him. But guess what? They hated him. After that, they hated him. And all he was doing is bringing the truth. Okay, the truth of the Lord, that he came and he was resurrected, that the prophecy was fulfilled. And that's what we must go through. The same thing that as the disciples go through, that's what's coming to us. 
And so when we, I, I'm, I get a clear picture. Okay, when they scoff me, when they make fun of me, when they, when they do these things to me, hey, I'm going to be hated when I ser say certain messages about other religions and stuff. Well, they don't like it. They don't like the truth of the Lord. And I always make sure I say that it's the truth of the Lord. It's God's truth. And so the Lord says, that's why I say, take it up with him. But I am just a messenger. But sometimes they don't like that messenger, just like Paul, just like the disciples, just like all of those that were martyred. Okay. Ever since. And, and all the prophets here too. Okay. So it says right here, uh, verse three, you push away every thought of coming disaster. And that's what came out at me when I went over this this morning. You push away every thought of coming disaster because as prophecy teachers, as, as we're sharing what the prophecies of Yahweh, of Yeshua, the prophets of the Lord, as we're sharing and I'm sharing, people don't want to hear it. But as Bereans, as believers, you must go to the to the prophets. You must read from the prophets. You know, I did. I just remembered. I just remembered a scripture, and I didn't add it here. And forgive me, but I remembered. I was going to put it here. Is is when uh, Lazarus? Okay, Lazarus and and and, and um. Oh gosh. Uh, anyhow, uh, let me just go ahead and finish this, okay? But he says they have the, uh, when Lazarus is talking to, to um, oh my goodness. Anyhow, let me, it might, it'll come to my remembrance. Forgive me. Uh, but anyhow, okay, let's go ahead and finish this. Uh, you push away every thought of coming disaster, but your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. In other words, they are pushing away the thought of coming disaster, just like today. Just like today, if you tell people, you must repent, you must repent, okay? There's like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I don't want to hear your doom and gloom. I don't want to hear what you're saying that's going to happen, that's going to come upon the earth. I don't want to hear it. But then they go and they do the same things that were they were doing before, and they don't come to the Lord, okay? And they hate you for it. It says, but your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. Because the Lord is going to come back to judge. Amen. Verse 4. How terrible for you who sprawl on ivory beds and lounge on your couches, eating the meat of tender lambs from the flock and of choice calves fattened in the stall. You sing trivial songs to the sound of the harp. And fancy yourselves to be great musicians like David. So they were, they were eating the fat off the land. Okay, these were believers here. These were his 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 beloved Israel, and they were rich. They had everything they wanted, but they left their first love. Amen. They left their first love, but they were still playing music. Trivial songs, songs that didn't even mean anything. And they were uh, to the sound of the harp, and they fancied themselves like great musicians like David. It says, you drink wine by the bowlful and perf perfume yourselves with fragrant lotions. You care nothing about the ruin of your nation. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives. Suddenly, all your parties will end. This is happening today. This is happening today. There are so many that enjoy their luxuries. So many. And like I said, is it luxuries? Is it luxuries that actually uh, uh, are bad? Well, they can distract, yes. But they also can do good. They can do very good. That's why the Lord blesses some with luxuries, with, with uh, success, believers. But they must be good at, their, at taking care of the money and helping each other. That's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. But these, these were swayed away. 
They left their love. They turned to their own ways. They were worshiping false gods already. And they were actually having a great time. But they weren't giving honor to the Lord anymore. They weren't honoring Him. They weren't following the laws no more. They left all of that. And they were living in luxury, treating the poor very poorly. Like a different society, the rich and the poor. It says you drink wine by the bowlful and perf perfume yourselves with fragrant lotions. You care nothing about the ruin of your nation. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives. Suddenly, all your parties will end. Suddenly, all your parties will end. The sovereign Lord has sworn by his own name. And this is what he, the Lord God of heaven's army says. I despise the arrogance of Israel. And I hate their fortresses. I will give this city and everything in it to their enemies. Oh my goodness. Verse 9, if there are 10 men left in one house, they will all die. And when a relative who is responsible to dispose of the dead goes into the house to carry out the bodies, he will ask the survivor, is anyone else with you? When the person begins to swear, no, bye, he will interrupt and say, stop, don't even mention the name of the Lord. When the Lord gives the command, homes, homes both great and small will be smashed to pieces. When the Lord gives the command, homes both great and small will be smashed to pieces. Remember we're reading the other day how we went through Joel chapter 2? And in Joel chapter 2, he says he is leading the column. He is leading that last end times beast, that last end times uh, revived empire, which we know Islamic empire revived. He's going to be leading them. When the Lord gives a command, but they listen, although they don't even know they're being used by the Lord. They're going to listen to him. Like every time he raised up an empire. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece. Even the Romans. Every time he raised up an empire. They're always, he's always in control. How he chastises, how he judges. When the Lord gives the command, homes both great and small will be smashed to pieces. Foreshadow. These are all foreshadows of repeated history of what's going on now and the coming judgment and the coming invasion. Can horses gallop over boulders? Can oxen be used to plow them? But that's how foolish you are when you turn justice into poison and the sweet fruit of righteousness into bitterness. And you brag about your conquest of Lodibar. You boast, didn't we take Karnaim by our own strength? Oh, people of Israel, I'm about to bring an enemy nation against you says the Lord God of heaven's armies. They will oppress you throughout your land. From Lebo Hamath in the north to the Arabah Valley in the south, all that region, from all the way north, all the way south. He's going to bring that military, that, that last end times uh, empire throughout all that region, the Antichrist. This is a foreshadow. This is future. This is what's going to happen. This is why we must pray. 
We must pray and continue to pray for those who live in the Middle East. Continue to pray for those Muslims. A lot of Muslims are coming to faith in the Lord. A lot of Hindus are coming to faith in the Lord. A lot of uh, Buddhists are coming to faith in the Lord. The Lord is stirring up. He's drawing those unto him. And even though you got to know, you got to realize that's true conversion. That is true conversion. Do you see what they go through? Especially those who convert from Hinduism or from Buddhism, uh, from all these religions, especially Muslims, if they convert, what happens to them? persecution like you wouldn't believe especially if they convert this is what's going on over there so you know something happens in these in these uh muslims lives in their souls in their spirit to the core they're born again because they can't stop once you're born again you're born again from god and they suffer and they know the risks. Afghanistan hit number one now on Open Door Ministries. Number one on the world watch list. Afghanistan. Number one of our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted. Number one. But the Lord said this would happen. The Lord knows the beginning from the end. That's why it's hard for some Bible teachers, some uh, uh, even prophecy teachers to say that this is the hand of the Lord in it. That he's raising up this last time, end times beast. But it, it's true. It's true. It's in the scriptures. He's preparing us. He will come back to judge. Yes, he will. But we must pray and spread the gospel to these places. Israel. We must warn them. The Lord warns them, flee to the mountains. When you see you're gathered, when, they, when, you, when you're surrounded and they gather around Israel, gather around Jerusalem, head to the hills, flee to the mountains. Do not be deceived. We must warn and we must help all our, our, our Jewish brothers and sisters, all of them, because it's coming there. Amos chapter 7, a vision of locusts. I love this part, and we're just going to go through it fairly quickly. But there is right here. Remember I said that you can actually ask the Lord and he might change things. Well, he actually did here. And I believe Moses did too. And also in Abraham with, with Sodom and Gomorrah. He saved Lot, remember, and the family there. And he destroyed all the rest. But he bartered with them. Abraham bartered with the Lord. And that's one of the instances where the Lord was actually come down. Pre-incarnate, pre the Lord came down and spoke to Moses. And he ate. <laughs> he had he prepared a meal for him and the two angels too. It's a beautiful story. I, don't, I know you probably read it. But he bartered. He said, if, if, if only five, what about 20? And he went all the way to five, I believe. What about 10? What about 15? He went down. You know, finally said, if there's five, you know, I won't destroy it. <laughs> but there was, there was a family and he did save them. Moses, he saved those Israelites. He talked on behalf of them because God wanted to destroy them all. He was like, that's it. I want to take them all out. But Moses said, no, please. I'm paraphrasing. But the Lord said, okay, I won't. And so right here, it's the same thing with Amos. Amos was showing showed visions as we as we start uh, chapter seven here. A vision of locusts. 
the sovereign Lord showed me a vision. I saw him prepare. I saw him preparing to send a, a vast swarm of locusts over the land. This was after the king's share had been harvested from the fields and as the main crop was coming up. In my vision, the locusts ate every green plant in sight. This is literally locusts. Locusts, okay? Remember, sometimes he uses analogies. Sometimes it's, it's real. And this is real locusts, the, you know, the locusts. And we know what a locust does to a crop. It says, in my vision, the locusts ate every green plant in sight. Then I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, please forgive us or we will not survive. For Israel is so small. So the Lord relented from this plan. I will not do it, he said. So he was going to, what was he going to do? He was going to bring a swarm of locusts to eat all their crops. All of them. And he didn't do it. He was preparing for it. But Amos talked him out of it. A vision of fire. Then the sovereign Lord showed me another vision. I saw him preparing to punish his people with a great fire. The fire had burned up the depths of the sea and was devouring the, the entire land. Then I said, O sovereign Lord, please stop, or we will not survive, for Israel is so small. And it is. Then the Lord relented from this plan too. He was going to do it. I will not do that either, says the sovereign Lord. Then a vision of a plumb line. Then he showed me another vision. I saw the Lord standing beside a wall that had been built using a plumb line. He was using a plumb line to see if it was still straight. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? I answered, a plumb line. And the Lord replied, I will test my people with this plumb line. I will lo no longer... I will no longer ignore all their sins. The pagan shrines of your ancestors will be ruined and the temples of Israel will be destroyed. I will bring the dynasty of King Jeroboam to a sudden end. And he did. We know that King Jeroboam was evil. We know what he was doing. He was uh, worshiping, uh, making shrines and worshiping false God. He was, he, was, he was doing evil in the sight of the Lord. And he brought, he brought it to a sudden end. He was in the kingdom of the, uh, the, north, the north kingdom of Israel. He was the king, the first king of the northern tribes of Israel up there, I believe. Amos and Amaziah. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is hatching a plot against you right here on your very doorstep. This was Amaziah. See what I mean by... by by prophets, look how they treated them. God's holy prophets. And this was the king of Israel. This is went on since King Hezek, uh, Zedekiah with Jeremiah. All these different kings, they didn't like it. They were living in luxury like we were talking about. They were living the good life. And the prophets that the Lord was sending them over and over and over. Look what they were doing to them. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam. King of Israel, Amos is hatching a plot against you. Amos is hatching a plot. When it was the word of the Lord, Amos was only the messenger saying, this is what the Lord says. This is what's going to happen to you. 
and hoping that they would repent. That's why he was telling them. Do you, you don't think that if the, if the king received the word and the people received the word from these prophets that the Lord sent and they repented, you think the Lord still would have took his life and destruction would have came? No. The Lord wants repentance. Till today, in our day, he still wants repentance. But guess what's going to happen if you go into Israel right now? You tell the leaders there, this is what's going to happen. On that day. They're not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen. Maybe some of them know the truth. I don't know. I'm not too certain of that. Maybe someone, they're just looking the other way. Maybe they're blinded. Like the source say, the Lord says that they're going to be partially blinded there. And they are, for the most part. So you just talk to them about Jacob's distress, Jacob's trouble. They look at you like, what? What are you saying? That we're going to be destroyed? That our military, our IDF is not going to be able to withstand these things? That an invading army by the Lord's hand are going to invade us? What? Never. What, really? That's what they said too. And all he wants is repentance. All he wants is for us to turn back to him. Love him. Honor him. Respect his laws. Like I said, there's those who believe in Messiah and Israel, but for the most part, they're doing their, their, their darn best. Excuse my language. One for Israel. They're doing some, some, some you know, the, the, the believers there. They're sharing the gospel in love. Praying. I pray every day that more Jews would come to the knowledge of the Lord because that day is coming. And it's a great and terrible day. It's not something to look forward to. The Lord is going to allow and bring this last empire into Jerusalem. And those in Jerusalem have to know this. We must tell them. This is truth. This is in the word of God. This is scripture. They don't like hearing it though. Just like we're reading right now. They don't like hearing it. But this is what the Lord is speaking through the prophets. And, it, and to love them is to tell them. To love them is to tell them. To love people is to tell them. This is what's going to happen. Anybody from any nation. The Lord is coming. And to love them is to tell them, to warn them, to ask them to repent if they're lost and they don't know the Lord. This is sharing the gospel. That's the way out. Believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the way out. Regardless if you die, that's the way out. That's the way to partake in his kingdom and live forever eternally with him. Because the other way is not a good place. It's a place of suffering, a place of torment. So if you love them, you tell them. But remember, they might hate you even unto death. Just like they're doing now in the Middle East and other places. And all we are about is love, God's love, but they still persecute him. It says, Then Amaziah the priest of Bethel sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is hatching a plot against you right here on your very doorstep. What he is saying is intolerable. Look at this. What he is saying is intolerable. The truth of the word, the truth of the scripture, the truth of what the Lord says. Go tell them this. 
God's word. They're saying it's intolerable. The Lord's words, what the Lord is saying, it, it's intolerable. They didn't believe him. It says he is saying Jeroboam will soon be killed and the people of Israel will be sent away into exile. And that's the truth. The Lord was saying this. Then Amaziah sent orders to Amos. Get out of here, you prophet. Go on back to the land of Judah and earn your living by prophesying there. He thought that he was doing it for money, for gain. Don't bother us with your prophecies here in Bethel. This is the king's sanctuary and the national place of worship. Remember, he had changed the ways, uh, King, king uh, uh, Jer Jeroboam. He had changed the ways. I'm going to just go through just really quick. I know you can't see this, but I'm going to tell you who Jeroboam was and what he was doing. It says Jeroboam was the first king of the rebellious northern tribes, not the kingdom, Israel, as opposed to Judah, was the kingdom. And there were nine tribes that comprised the kingdom of Israel. He started worshiping. Let me see if I could pull it up here. I wish I had this on hand. And uh, it says the Hebrew Bible describes the reign of Jeroboam to have commenced following a revolt of the 10 northern uh, Israel tribes against Rehoboam that put an end to the united monarchy. Um, Anyhow, I just, I just, I went, I didn't have that ready on hand, but he didn't do well. He was actually, um, he was actually, uh, start, he built altars. He started just changing things. And, um, let me see here. I just read it. I'm, I, I, I apologize for this. I wasn't, I should have had it on hand. Oh, right, here it is. It says Jeroboam built shrines to these idols and appointed priests for them. So he was idol worshiping, built shrines. He was doing his own thing. And the Lord says, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send Amos to go tell him. Remember, this was going on a lot over there. And he sent Amos to go tell him, hey, you're going to die. The Lord doesn't like this, what you're doing here. And the Lord says, you're going to die. To repent, in other words, stop doing what he was doing. So uh, uh, Amaziah said, get out of here, you prophet. Go on back to the land of Judah and earn your living by prophesying there. Don't bother us with your prophecies here in Bethel. This is the king's sanctuary and the national place of worship. This is the king's sanctuary. Oh, my goodness. But Amos replied, I'm not a professional prophet, and I was never trained to be one. I'm just a shepherd, and I take care of sycamore fig trees. You see, the Lord can use anyone. Look how he called David out. David was just a shepherd boy, right? But he was a man after God's own heart. It's all about the heart. Doesn't matter who you are, what your stature, stature is. The Lord can use anyone. Anyone. Uh, me, myself, I am nothing. I'm nobody. I'm, I'm not trained or nothing like this. But I love the Lord's word and I read the Lord's word. I study it. And I'm in love with the Lord, his word. I'm in love with his laws, his statutes. That's what came about in my life. Me. If you know my testimony, you know what I'm talking about. Me. 
Am I worthy? No way. No way. I'm not worthy. But the Lord chose a, a lot of us, a lot of us, and brought us out of a life of who knows what. Doesn't matter who you are. That's why I'm up here. That's why I'm doing this, because I passionately care about the, what the Word says and what the Lord says. I'm bringing the same prophecies that he spoke through the prophets because I know what he's saying. And so did Amos here. He was just a little shepherd. He was just a shepherd. Don't discount somebody when they're just a nobody. Seriously. Because sometimes we could catch ourselves doing that. What do you know? All you, all you are is a shepherd. Where's your credentials? Where's your credentials? No, we're not going to listen to you. What, what, what do you got? What do you got? What do you got to show us? Where's your credentials? Where's your certificates? Where's your diplomas? Nothing wrong with those things. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Please. No disrespect. But the Lord can use anybody. So listen next time. Listen to that shepherd, that poor, that poor shepherd, when he has maybe a word for the Lord. He says, I'm just a shepherd, and I take care of sycamore fig trees. That's all he was. But the Lord called me away from my flock and told me, Go and prophesy to my people in Israel. The Lord called on him. But you know what? He must have been obedient. Because he honored Amos. He always picks those who are righteous in his eyes. Look at, look at Moses, Moshe. Look at Noah, Lot. They found favor with the Lord. Enoch walked with God. They found favor in the Lord's eyes. Why? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, because they honored him, because they, they saw the law, they knew the law. They worshiped him in spirit and in truth. They obeyed his commandments. And so this little shepherd boy or shepherd man, Amos, he must have been the same way, just like David. The Lord knows the hearts of those that he knows honors him. So he picked Amos. He says, now, go over here. You're going to do this now. So he was being obedient. But the Lord called me away from my flock and told me, go and prophesy to my people in Israel. Now then, listen to this message from the Lord. And this is what the Lord's message was. You say, don't prophesy against Israel. Stop preaching against my people. But this is what the Lord says. Because this is what the king was saying, right? You say, don't prophesy against Israel. Don't give them warning. Don't say these things are going to come upon the land. Just like today. These things are going to come upon the land of Israel. Jerusalem. But we're not saying it in a bad way. We are warning. We are calling out to those who don't believe. Repent. Come out of your sins. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Believe in Messiah. We say this in love. So many of them take it in, it, that we're hating them. No, we're not. To love them is to tell them the truth. You say, don't prophesy against Israel. Stop preaching against my people. But this is what the Lord says. Your wife will become a prostitute in this city. And your sons and daughters will be killed. Your land will be divided up. And you yourself will die in a foreign land. 
and the people of Israel will certainly become captives in exile, far from their homeland. And this came to pass. This he was talking to Jeroboam, King Jeroboam, which didn't believe him. And it came to pass. It's written in history what happened to him. This is the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. This is why I, it's an hour, just just perfectly an hour, just right now, one hour. Um, I was. This is why I saved that video. I was I was gonna maybe show it in the end, but I'm not gonna show it. Okay, uh, because how scripture gets me when I read it, how I, I feel so. I feel inside me right now, and it, this is not just to. The word of the Lord is powerful. And the message is powerful. This is why we could we could mess around. We could laugh. You know, I brought you that video in the beginning that we laughed a little bit. But then it got really serious. This is why I said, well, I should show it because this happens after I read. This happens. And so today, today, we warn, we call out, repent, everyone, to all nations. We don't want to see you go to the bad place. The place that's not made for human beings. We preach salvation in love to every single person. Come out of your wicked ways. Repent. Love the Lord with all your heart. Believe in Yeshua. Believe He's our Savior. Believe He's coming back. The great, the days are growing shorter. The time is growing shorter and shorter. This is why me and my, my brothers and sisters in Christ preach this message. They might not get as emotional as I do, I, but I feel it in my core. But it's the same thing. They teach these things. The blessed, the, the brothers and sisters who have been blessed, and they are they are teachers, they are scholars. Nothing wrong with that. Blessed be him. But they serve the same purpose. I know they do. They truly care. Okay, so I'll end it there. It's it's just going over like two minutes now of the hour. So I hope you were blessed. I hope you uh you take something away, especially the message, the word of the Lord. Please share these videos. I love you, and I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time, okay? Uh and my next video, the last chapter is coming up, chapter eight. Um, I saved it for last because it's another awesome, powerful chapter. Uh, remember, read, study the prophets of our Lord Yahweh, Yeshua. Okay, study the prophets. Study the prophets in the Holy Bible. Amen. And um, just on your own time, just go through them, you know, go through them. Amen. Once again, my name is David, and uh, I love all of you. Uh, please continue to pray for me. And just an update on my dad. Um, he's doing very well. Thank you for your prayers. Um, thank you for the Lord blessing us with uh, natural remedies um, that, are, that are made to help us, especially in these days. And, and, uh, and so he's doing very well with all your prayers of the saints. I truly appreciate it. He's getting stronger by the day. Uh, 93 years old, and uh, these things helped him, you know, and uh, and I testify to that. So thank you. Thank you for your prayers, number one. I love you guys, and I'll end this now. I'll see you in my next video uh, when we finish off the book of Amos, chapter 8. 
Um, thank you for joining me and uh, goodbye for now, but never forever. Remember, amen. Amen.